Right. I've been, I've been in the liberty movement since 2006, and for the past four and a half years, I've been fighting for the hearts and minds of American or young Americans here in the United States in the state of Georgia. I actually live in Atlanta, in a part of Atlanta that wanted to secede from Atlanta, and there is nothing more Georgian than secession. <laughs> uh, right, so, thank you, one guy. <laughs> what I want to talk about this morning is we need to talk about young people. And uh, here's why. Uh, there's, a, there's a Pew study or Pew research that does opinion poll every year. It's called something like a government and governance survey. And uh, they, look at, they ask a bunch of questions, the essence of which is, you know, do you want the government to do more and interfere in the economy more, or do you want to, to leave to capitalism and markets? It's more complicated than that, but essentially it's this. 80% of young people, four out of five, want the government to do more. They want less capitalism and they want more government. Now, this is nothing new, but as Pew researchers note, this is the highest it's ever been. So that is bad. That is a bad news for us because if we believe in a government by the people and for the people, this means our ideas will be voted out. Well, not tomorrow, but if the direction, if it continues in that direction, our ideas will be voted out. And perhaps in 20 years or 50 years, people will look at us and our ideas and say, hey, how quaint these people used to believe in limited government. Well, how interesting, right? I don't, I don't want that. So we need to do something about young people. Now, before we ba start bashing young people, let me remind you two things. One, all groups in that survey want the government to do more. The only group that want the government to do less by a slim margin is people born before 1945. So we are all guilty. And second, before we start to sort of talking about people and their TikToks and how the attention span is short and something like that, let me give you this quote about young people which goes something like, uh, the young people of today are beautiful, pretentious children, incapable of deeper thought, reflection, who have brushed away all the tradition and knowledge of future of, uh, of the past generations. Uh, University of Chicago debate of 1929. Complaining about young people is what we do, then we get older. <laughs> right, so how do we get to these TikTok obsessed people? Well, my first advice is, let's go where they are. Let's go to the schools, universities, clubs, after-school clubs, anywhere the young people are, anywhere they, where they congregate, that's where we need to be. Now, we did that successful in Lithuania, we did that successful in the Foundation for Economic Education, we went into the classrooms and let's say this year delivered 65,000 lectures, or lectures to 65,000 students. That's all in one year here in the United States. Now, some of my more libertarian colleagues say, well, Z, but you see, uh, government schools, Attendance is compulsory, it's a captive audience, kids have to listen to us, it's not very libertarian. To which I say, kids have to listen to us for 45 minutes and they cannot leave, let's go to high schools. <laughs> because if we don't, someone else will, and they already do. And this is important to understand that high school years are the formative years. And now, most of you think about liberty, read books about economics, you think about this. But how many of yours understanding of chemistry comes from what you learned in high school? I would bet a high much, I, I know that I'm watching Breaking Bad, I recall my high school chemistry. Same with most people have more important things to do than worry about limited government and what Adam Smith wrote or what Mises said. What they learn in high school, what they learn as teenagers, that's gonna form their adult years. And if they, continue, if they grow up in the high school knowledge that, or high school understanding that capitalism destroys and enslaves people, being good people, they will want to dismantle this. So we need to be at high schools, otherwise the people will uh, do it for us. And my advice on that, be useful to the high school, be useful to the teacher, make, friend with the, make friends with the teachers and bureaucrats. We might complain about Kim Kardashian, but the teacher is the ultimate influencer of young people. Like I said, it can be done, it takes time, but rather than working against the system, I would say work with the system. Use the centralized system as a, as a way to get in and spread your message. What we did in Lithuania, uh, we created an economics textbook for high schools, we promoted it, we got into 80% of high schools which means that kids learn about economics, society, what government should and shouldn't do by the book written by us. And we use the fact 
that curriculum is centralized to actually spread it all over the place. Once again, it can be done, it needs to be done, we absolutely have to do that. So that's one thing. Second thing, I would say, uh, talk to the kids in a language that they understand. Now, if, you go, if we go and communicate online, because that's where kids spend most of their time, apart from being at school, they're online. We have to understand that we're competing not against socialists, or not just against socialists. We're competing against everything, including cat videos. And we need to make our point in 10 seconds or less. Eight minutes, that's like a full feature length movie for most of the people. So if we, if we need to make our point fast, we need to make it well. It doesn't mean dumbing down. It doesn't mean uh, you know, adding a cat video about a libertarian cat, although I would watch that. Uh, but we need, to make, we need to speak in a language that young people understand. Here's a simple example. Um, a couple of years ago, Fee did that wonderful study uh, sponsored by John Demblin Foundation in which we looked what kind of language do young people respond to. And here's an example. Two libertarian or conservative slogans. Don't hurt people, don't take their stuff, and taxation is theft. All of them, or both of them, are logical derivations of other. However, young audiences, 56% of people, of young people, regardless of how they identify, they agree with that don't hurt people, don't take their stuff. Only 9% agreed with the taxation is theft slogan. What does it mean? Well, most likely young people have experienced bullying of some sort in which their stuff was taken and they were hurt. Therefore, they relate. Young people have absolutely no idea what taxation is. Therefore, they don't relate. So once again, speak in a language that young people can understand. Speak about the topics that young people can relate to. 80% or more of young people think climate change is an existential threat in their lifetimes. Now, whether it is or not, that's a whole different question, but they believe that. If we don't provide a capitalist utopia in which, how, in which capitalism saves the world from climate change, in which we all drive Teslas and robotic, robotic taxis, they will listen to people who give those answers. And those people who give those answers, they give an answer that the government will solve climate change, which of course is not the case. But my point is, speak in a language young kids understand, and speak with the topics they understand. Not what we care about, not the Austrian business cycle theory, even though that's a wonderful topic. Young people don't know what that is, right? So we need to talk about those topics. I could go on and on and on and on, but uh, sort of let me finish with these three thoughts. Uh, so first of all, it can be done, but we need strategic patience and operational restlessness. Even if we all start doing right things tomorrow, it will take some time for it to change. However, if we don't do anything, or if we don't do the right things, the situation will not change by itself. This is not a fever that breaks. This is not a storm that will pass. If we don't do the right things, many bad things will happen in the future, and many of these bad things will be done by young people. So this is important. Second, I understand this is not easy, but you know, as Kennedy said, we go to the moon not because it's easy, but because it's hard. Let me paraphrase that. We go after young people, not because it's easy, but because it's necessary. Young people are too important to be left to the left. Thank you.